you can win three things out of those masters. Skill of communication, presentation, even feedback or leading people. Fun, which goes hand in hand with a friendly environment and friends who come all over the world who are from all the kind of interest. And today I would like to speak about the friends. I will never forget the day when I was at Bohemian Toastmaster meeting and I saw the guy who, inter who introduced himself like Hi, my name is Kirtaraj Gunja, I'm from India and I came to Czech Republic to find a company here to sell the furniture and to sell it to whole Europe. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but because of his passion and extraordinary positive attitude I wanted to meet that guy again. And since I could even help him, because I've been working with the joiners and carpenters from Czech Republic and Slovakia, it could be profitable for both sides. So we had a meeting, we talked, and he invited me to India. He said, Martin, come to India to see my factory and for wedding of my two brothers. As I knew something a little bit about Indian weddings, which are really, really famous, the decision was pretty easy to decide to go. It was an awesome amazing trip with 3,000 people on the wedding, but I'm not going to speak about it. <laughs> two, years, two years later, he came to me, I shall be met, so he just announced me, Martin, come to India again. He invited me again for a wedding, but this time it was his own. So the decision was even easier. The trip started last year before Christmas with two fellow Toastmasters, Sharka and Ivan. And the first destination was Dubai. We spent three nights there. It was awesome time because in the freezing Prague, from the freezing Prague to really hot Dubai, hot water, sun, it was really, really nice time. Then we went to Mumbai, then to Goa, where the beaches looks like paradise on earth. And then we moved to a small city of Rajasthan called Jodhpur, which is a little tiny city compared to other cities of India and the country itself, but not compared to Prague. There's 1.5 million people. The wedding to come from our traveling to wedding itself, the wedding usually takes about 10 days, which is impossible for for me to spend there, or we spent three weeks in total, so it would be possible. But this time it was a unique wedding because it was not Indian with Indian, but there is a story behind it. Kirti was marrying Oksana, girl from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They met one and a half years ago in the bar. They saw each other five minutes. Then they emailed and Skyped for five months. Then Kirti went to see Oksana for a weekend. Oksana went to see Kirti for a weekend, then they had come on vacation in Italy, and there came the magic question. Oksana, will you marry me? She said yes! So that's why we went to India for a wedding, and she was really brave because to come for the first time to India and straight for the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend that. <laughs> It, uh, it is a really, really nice time there and the whole event was in one day when the afternoon was a Sangi party where all the people dance, celebrate or actually dance, eat and chat together. Then there is a ceremony which is the wedding itself, there is the promise with a lot of traditional stuff behind that when they promise to each other not only that those common things which we know but something even more. And then there is a party called Le reception in the night with the dinner. And there is the most people there because there is food for free. So <laughs> even people from streets get in and enjoy. It was a really nice time and we were just a few white people there. So everybody wanted to meet us and because I knew some people since the first wedding. So it was a really nice time. And there was one guy. It was supposed to be Kirti's future business partner from Mumbai, about 50 years old, and he came there with his wife and son. And he was same passion, same passionate and same positive 
with the same positive attitude as guilty, maybe even more. He was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It was the most entertaining man of the whole wedding. And when he was dating with a extra style something like this and like I, I don't remember all of it, but we were laughing a lot. And Kitty said, don't bring it, bring just alcohol. Indians love it and they can't buy it here. So many people brought alcohol and when they were drinking and drinking and dancing a lot, they got it drunk, obviously, after a few shots. And this guy looked very entertained. But then happened something we you never want to see and not at your wedding. Suddenly, we fell down on the ground. And I thought in the first time that he injured his knee, but he wasn't moving at all. His son immediately pulled him up, pulled him away from the dancing floor, put him on the ground, no move. They were trying to feel his pulse, no bulls. Heart attack. And it seemed very bad. All the people wanted to help. 200 people in the room, in the very, very small room. And I knew he needs air. So I was trying to force the people go out. But they want to help. So they started to give him some pills, which he had in his pocket. They started to pull the water in the, into his mouth. And they started to massage his heart. Nothing helped. Suddenly, he turned on again. So he, he was again conscious. So it was a happy moment. What happened then? Again, he was unconscious. So they started to think about, call ambulance. No, bring him to the hospital. And because I was working as a lifeguard, I knew one thing, that he needs only CPR, the massage of the, of, the, of the earth, there is no chance to put him in the car and go to the, go, go to the hospital because he will die. So they massaged his heart, they called ambulance and then someone decided, hey, we should go, we should really go by car. And I said, no, don't do it, he'll die. But those people don't listen to you. When you are white, there's no chance. So I'll, I'll let them. But you know, when in your hand is man's life, you don't let it go. So I went there again. And then one guy stopped me and he said, they will not listen to you. I'm a doctor. I know he needs massage of his heart, but they don't listen even me. They will not listen to you. So guess what they done? Put him into the car, they went to the hospital. I don't have to say that the party was over. It's obvious. We went back to the hotel. And it was really hard to sleep. Some people are trying to be positive. It's like, you know, it's gonna be okay, it's just a heart attack. I know it won't. Once they get him to the car, it won't be good. In the morning, Kitty came to the to our room, to the hotel, and he said, the guy died. And I would expect that he would be sad, so, and you know, dumb. But he came in the room and said, he died. And you know what? I want to die as him, to have a fun on the wedding of himself, to enjoy the life because he enjoyed every moment of his life. And he died when he was living for a hundred percent. I was, I expected Kilti to be really down, but he wasn't. And the point of this story is simple. We can't change those situations, even those moments happen on our wedding. And it may seem like a cliche, but we need to learn how to handle those situations and it's all about attitude. And I'm Toastmaster.